Let's go. Let's go. Sit down. I only got 10 minutes. I only got 10 minutes. Man, are y'all y'all excited to be in church? We can't waste no time today. I only got 10 minutes. If I were to name every single person that has moved the needle in my life that is in this room right now, we'd be here a lot longer than 10 minutes. Thank you for believing in a busboy from Panera Bread just like me. I think they got a picture of me bussing tables at Panera Bread when I was 24 years old, clean shaven. Y'all can throw that picture up there. That's me right there. $7.25 an hour, didn't know a single soul in Apex, North Carolina, working it. I would take the bagels home at the end of the day just so that my kids could eat food. I remember walking home because we only had one car with a trash bag full of bagels just so that God's calling on our lives could be fulfilled. Eight years later, I'm able to present a check for $5,000 to CMN today. Just as a, as a, I'm going to sow a seed. I got to sow a seed, baby. I got to sow a seed. Does that buy me any more time or no? Okay. Before, before I could give a check for $5,000 to CMN, I was making $7.25 an hour at Panera Bread. No salvations to post about on Instagram. No baptisms to celebrate. Nothing. Fruitless, but faithful. Fruitless, but faithful. I'm reminded of Luke 13, where there is a tree that bears no figs, and the landowner comes to it year after year after year. I don't have to give you all the context. Y'all are Bible scholars. Preaching to you guys is like swinging a golf club in front of Tiger Woods. Year after year, the landowner comes to this figless tree, and one year, he's had enough of being fruitless. He's had enough of no results. He's had enough of the same thing without any results. And he goes to the gardener and he says, cut this tree down. And the gardener says something very specific in verse eight. He said, the gardener answered, sir, give it one more chance. You like how I put the theme in there? I'm just trying to make sure I'm, it's, it's, you know what I'm saying? Give it one more chance. Leave it another year and I'll give it special attention and plenty of fertilizer. I'd like to preach to you for the next seven minutes on the subject, give it one more chance. Give it one more chance. Some of you are Sunday to Sunday right now and you need to give it one more chance. Some of you came to this conference as a last ditch effort to see if God would speak to you one more time. And I came here as the gardener today to tell you, do not cut the thing that you planted down, but give it one more chance. Give it one more chance. How do I give it one more chance? Very simple. You gotta stop counting Sundays and start counting seasons. He says, he says, don't give it one more week. He says, give it one more year. Some of you are week to week right now. Some of you are, are, are basing your calling based on what happened on a Sunday. But last time I checked, God isn't always, I don't always feel like he's been faithful to me on a Sunday. But when I look back on a season, I can tell you right now, he has been good. I might not be working at Panera Bread anymore, but when I look back at that season, I can see his faithfulness. I remember, I remember when I was counting Sundays, I was counting Sundays, we counted the offering on Sunday. Y'all know what I'm talking about? The offering will make you really want to quit. Week six, the Sunday after Thanksgiving, nobody's in church. Me, 40 other people. I said, how much was the offering? They said, $11. All of it, all of it. I said, well, I gave 10. <laughs> and so I said, give me my $10 back if nobody else is gonna give in this church and I won't give either. <laughs> Don't quit because the offering's low. Don't quit because the attendance is low. Give it one more chance. Give it one more chance. The second thing you gotta do is you gotta stop making comparisons and start making compost. Stop making comparisons and start making compost. The gardener says, I'll dung it in the King James Version. I'll dung it. You know what dung is? The stuff that nobody wants to do. But it's the things that no one sees that get the results that everybody else wants. 
You gotta fertilize the calling on your life. Give it one more chance. Don't cut it down just yet. I know you're gonna have to do some dirty work. You're gonna have to make it look like it's bigger than what it really is at the beginning. I remember one day when we couldn't afford walkie-talkies for the safety team. Couldn't afford walkie-talkies. But I could afford an earpiece. So I found the biggest dude in my church. I said, I need you to put this earpiece on. He says, where's the walkie-talkie? I said, I don't have walkie-talkie. I said, just put this in your ear. And then put this, up, put this on the back. Put this in your back pocket. Don't let it hang out there because they won't see. They, they need to think that you have a walkie-talkie. Because I, want, I wanted a safety team like a mega church, but I could only afford a little earpiece. You know what I'm saying? But some of you need to go through a season right now where you act like where God is taking you. Stop making comparisons and start digging down deep into the dung of ministry. You got to start working hard. Oh, you, you think it's going to be easy? It ain't easy. Give it one more chance. You know, what, you know what fertilizer looks like? I think they got a picture of me in the back of a trailer. We couldn't afford an enclosed trailer. All we could afford was a little, a little land, landscaping trailer. That's me sitting in the back of the trailer holding down the pipe and drape. I don't know about you, but there are seasons when you can't compare your trailer to other trailers, where you can't compare your attendance to other attendants, where you just got to get the fertilizer and start to dig that thing deep and start to give it special attention. I'm not called to your tree. I'm not called to your plant. I'm called to the land that I own, so I'm going to give it one more chance I'm going to give it one more chance I'm going to give it one more chance to want, some, to want what someone else has is to insult what God has given you to want what someone else has is to insult what God has given you stop making comparisons start making compost give it another chance Give it another chance, one more, one more chance, one more chance. The last thing you have to do is you have to surround yourself with gardeners that are willing to give your dream one more year. The landowner was around the right guy at the right time. Some of you are so lonely in your land that you don't have a gardener in your life to look at the root system and its potential and say, give it one more chance. Five years into the church plant, we were evicted with two Sundays notice. Not a single place to meet, 300 people, nowhere to go. We called a, a family fun day at the park in front of the school and we didn't tell the church that we couldn't go into the school, we just said family fun day, you know? Because sometimes you gotta have the earpiece without the walkie talkie, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, Lord, I hope they're hiring on Boonville Avenue because I'm not about, I'm about to have a job. I'm about to get evicted from this school. I ain't going to have no poor people left. Church was bleeding out dry. People were leaving left and right. We moved from a high school that sat 500 to a little country club that sat 50 people. Had to do three services because we were evicted. It's the only place. We got kicked out of that country club after three Sundays because our subwoofers were messing with the people's brunch on the other wall on the other side. After that, we went to Saturday nights at my friend's church, Baptist church, setting up, tearing down Saturday nights. There's no, there, it's just in the rule book. <laughs> Saturday nights alone is really tough to do. But I would call on people like Travis Jones, call on people like Aaron Burke, call on people like John J. Wilson, call on people like Greg Ford. I'd call on people like Chris Raley. I'd call on the gardeners in my life that said, do not give up on the dead things in your, in your calling because if you give up on those dead things, this church will not succeed. You came into this room today and you thought that your land was fruitless. And I was sent here all the way from Raleigh, North Carolina to tell you to give it one more chance. Give it one more chance. Go through it one more time. Get up there and preach like there's 5,000 people in the room. Get up there and start posting on Instagram Live like there's a bunch of people. Get up there and start setting up there. Just straighten the rows out. Add more chairs. Start, start, start making sure that, that everything is in alignment for you to succeed. 
Give it one more chance. I don't want you to, I don't want your land to die. I don't want your, I don't want your fig tree to be fruitless. I believe in you and I came here as the gardener to give it one more chance. Do not quit. Do not throw in the towel. Don't you dare give up on the dream that God placed inside of you. If I could make it from Panera Bread and in an open bed trailer with a little security thing in my ear, I'm sure, I'm sure that you can make it in rural America. I'm sure that you can make it in urban America. I'm sure that you can make it if God did it for me, he can do it for you. Give it one more chance.